Yeah. I want to finish uh, 12 and 13. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. Make level paths for your feet so that the lame may the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. I think this is so important because the reason we endure this discipline, the reason we embrace personal holiness is so that we can have power to heal, so that we can be used to heal. I wouldn't, well, I, I would, I'm going to choose to challenge you on that point mm -hmm. because before we are ministers, we are sons and daughters. Yep. So I would say that the point isn't to be able to heal. The point is to be restored so as to be a son or daughter like the Lord sees us to be in heaven. Mm -hmm. um, the, the fruit is, the fruit of being a wholly restored child in health, spiritual and emotional health primarily, and physical health, is first and foremost because our Heavenly Father loves His children and He wants to see us thrive. Mm -hmm. The fruit of being a whole and secure son or daughter in our Heavenly Father is that we will live in we will we will begin to live in this world to be like our father which then is releasing healing but the purpose isn't to release healing the purpose is to be a son and daughter if you see what i'm saying uh, we do I not mean, have, it, we it, do not it, have a, it depends on what stage you're at i guess we don't have a, we don't have a mandate to to do to do works yes we do we have a we have a mandate to be son we the invitation is to be a son or daughter yes and the fruit and the fruit of being a son or daughter is the good works no. that we that we naturally do I, I, it is not, I would it is not possible. It is not possible to do the works of God in this world to the degree that he that he wants us to do them uh -huh. if we if we are not um, connected your words earlier connected okay, yes. to the vine. That's right. That's right. Which is the understanding of what it means to be a son or daughter of the king. Exactly. Yes, that's true. But so even one, so first and foremost, absolutely, that is step one. That is step one. But it's not the fullness of what God has called us. And I, I, I'm, and my journey of the last 11 years is me coming to this place where I can finally admit that I was rebellious, but I was also ignorant. And I didn't know that there was actually something deeper about learning how to hear the voice of God and be obedient to our father. Uh -huh. So so I had unintentionally wandered so far away from where his perfect plan for my life was mm -hmm. supposed to go. And the process of pulling me back in required an abundance of refining fire. I'm just thinking out loud really about about what I, about these words that we just read that he that uh, and it's somewhere else or the, right here that a loving father disciplines his children um and, and there's another scripture and, and, verse where it says that god scourges those he calls sons ouch yeah um, <laughs> But so here's it. And, and these are different levels of maturity. Like there are stages. It's not one thing, you know, Paul talks about, you know, you should, you should be teachers by now, but I have to give you the milk of the word again. You know, there is a speech among the mature, but we can't give it to you because you're still fighting about, you know, are you Baptist or are you a Pentecostal? Right. You know, right. <laughs> like, you know, you're still fighting that. So you're not, um, 
you know, there, he talks about a speech within the mature, you know, and yeah. what makes us mature, okay, or puts us on that platform of maturity is when we are living and applying scripture to our, our practical living. That mm -hmm. is what makes us mature. We're lit. We're taking the world word. We're taking these commands and we are living it out. You know, um, we see the commands and we seek to live it. We seek to obey it, to apply it in practical ways, whatever that looks like. Some looks radical. Some looks weird. Some look more practical than others. We're free to be, you know, unique in how that looks uh but you know self-sacrifice helping others benevolence service is all universal to the you know the walk of a christian <clears throat> you know and uh but the, you know i just want to highlight that there is stages of maturing you know you're not going to scourge a babe in the lord you know, right. <laughs> you know, that, right. that just, that's just not, uh, you know, that the babe's focus is relationship and mm -hmm. it is, you know, certain things. Um, uh, a, a good uh, pastor had once kind of brought it to perspective for me. He explained to me that in the Jewish culture, the bar mitzvah was uh. a, a milestone where the son becomes a son and it's like what right and so uh the way uh, the family dynamic and the jewish culture at some point was was that mm, the child was left to the servants the women and the the slaves to raise up until the bar mitzvah the bar mitzvah is when the son becomes like 12 or 13 years old. And are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. I'm listening. Uh, the bar mitzvah is when the son turns <clears throat> 12 or 13 years old, something like that. And once that happens, then the father takes the son and the son becomes an apprentice of the father. So now the son went from child status into apprentice okay and the son then starts learning the father's business until the father deems the son worthy to take over at which point he releases the the business with along with its responsibilities and gives that inheritance to the son but it's at the discretion of the father when the son gets to that level okay yeah that's, and, yeah, that's good and so i the, this i believe these stages are at work in our maturing process right we we're we're babes and god shows himself like mighty with these little signs and wonders we're like yeah Oh, but we're like really immature and we're reckless and we're wild we're like oh no, 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 god is good right and then there's like oh i want to do that you know I, there's a desire and a hunger for more and that requires more study um that's kind of our apprentice role we're preparing you know and god you know is with us when he sends us out into ministry but we're still learning and so there's a grace to fail right but there's also a call to not depend on the grace but to understand why certain things have to be so that we can mature and god can trust us with the business now that's a whole nother level of authority when god says whatever you ask for my son it shall be done right we're uh, at apprentice level it's kind of like we're asking but we got to look you know god is that okay 
was this all right? I'm not sure if I asked a miss, you know, uh, how come it didn't happen? And we don't have that understanding where we're at apprentice level. We're not really there. But if we desire, there is also that invitation to gain that understanding. Why did this not happen right away? Why is this not happening? You know, um, why are you calling? Is this a weight thing or is this a wrong thing? You know, and asking those deep questions to understand the logic of God, because God has a logic and it's revealed in scripture. Amen. You know, and so when you understand the logic, it's like, like, right, we, we grow up with parents, right? And we see what they like. We see uh, all the junk they talk about other people when they're not there. We see what they care about, right? And, you know, at some point when you're out and about, you know, you can confidently say, oh, I'm not doing that because if my mom finds out, whoo, I'll never hear the end of that, you know, oh, because you understand the logic of your parents in certain areas, right? Right, so right, right, yes. To that same measure, we can come to an understanding of God and yeah. be like, oh, my goodness, you know, but we, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's a process, but, we, we, you know, it's also it's relative to the measure of hunger, you know, um, uh, and your willingness to step out and experience God in certain things. Um, Amen. Yeah. But it's also, but it's also um, our rebelliousness is also has to do with, uh, it, it, there's a direct correlation between, um, or correlation between our um obedience and our brokenness yeah right yeah well if we're, if, so if we're whole and if we're whole and healed and connected to the lord and we know that that he is the one that provides all good and beautiful gifts yeah we we have we have no reason to go anywhere else so but if if we haven't fully come to that place of understanding that he want he wants us for himself. He promises good. He promises us good things, mm -hmm. and he promises to help us to 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 thrive us and raise us up. There, to the extent that we are obedient to his leading and guiding, is to the extent that he will do that. Um, I, I confirm what you're saying that it it has to do with character personality development mm -hmm. his deemed timing mm -hmm. based on that process to get to wherever he wants us to be which is i think i think one might say to be living in the fullness of the fruits of the spirit that when somebody sees us they would actually see jesus mm -hmm. in every way and um and the rebelliousness or the the lack of that connection hopefully should become less and less as we get stronger and stronger, healthier and healthier, or more mature in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, it's kind of like, so obedience is a discipline and a discipline. It's kind of like, like an exercise regimen, <laughs> right? You know, yeah. um, it depends on what it is. Like some things are easier to obey, right? If they're just in alignment uh, with your personality versus other things are a little more complicated, you know, um, yeah. to, to solve. And it's different for, per person, you know, depending on like preference and stuff. So it's a discipline that we can do great in certain areas and excel and we can have like weakness in other areas. Right. Um, yeah. and I mean, even myself and, you know, I've been in the Lord for a while now. Like I have, I see re rebellion, you know, still in me in 
you know, very small areas, you know, but I see it and it's, it's a source of frustration for me. And part of what triggers me to rebel is weariness. Like I'm tired, you know, and in scripture says, you know, uh, do not grow weary in well, in well doing. I do tend to get weary in well doing and I have the efforts. And as much as I love God, right, I start hating people and I don't want to serve people the way I should. Out of weariness, it makes total sense. Yeah. Has the Lord been teaching you at all about self-care? So, I mean, I, 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 I mean, you know, I take showers, I eat, I do things. Um, take naps during the day? Yeah, when I need it, you know, yeah. like I'm free, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, so this is something that I would say, as much as the Lord has taken uh, so much out of me, this yeah. is something that has lingered despite you know and i do good i do good for for years like i'll do good for like three four years before i'll get the efforts you know and then i i backslide to some extent you know and then i get reconciled with god when the pain is is bad enough right and then i'll do good for like another sprint until i actually go and i get the efforts again and that's why i'm yeah. like you know i tell people like i'm extremely smart and retarded because <laughs> i know that rebelling against what i know is you know is just not profitable yet despite the fact even in knowledge and understanding, I will still choose to backslide. And, and so, you know, there's this, work, there's this, you know, battle here at work, right? And it's like, praise the Lord that we're not under the law, right? Yes. Because, because if it was right. under the law, I mean, I would have, you know, I've sentenced myself to death, death many times. <laughs> like, just, right, 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 right. You know, and so, you know, this has kind of led me into a deeper understanding of the grace we're under. And it's like, oh my God, you know, like my, my primary goal as a teacher is to speak the truth for what it is and not water it down, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And right. um, the truth about humanity is that we're prone to fail. And so putting anyone on a pedestal or thinking that you can achieve something perpetually is unreasonable, you know? And I think we, uh, people do that, you know? Um, I've done good in areas, like even in the areas of my weakness where I have rebelled, you know, willingly and knowingly over the same thing, <laughs> right? Like, it's like, oh, um, talk about insanity, right? Doing the same thing, expecting different, I, well, I don't expect different results. I just don't care about the result at the time that I'm choosing. But um, the fact that I know all this and I still engage it really just kind of highlights to me a deeper reality to the human condition, you know, that is in us. And, but God has provided a solution in Christ. There, we, The solution has already been made. Um, our goal is to just stay true and to return, 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 return. Now there's a danger if you fall too far into sin that you get stuck because the deeper you go, like it gets sticky. I don't know if that makes sense. After um yeah yeah absolutely it makes sense you know and and i i have been to the point where i was radic after I, being radically saved after the three supernatural years 
and five years of, of, of celibacy and just like in ministry that um, I, in trying to get custody of my kids, I started backsliding, deteriorating. I've started becoming weary. Um, and then I got into a relationship. My, my married the man, you know, and um, to try to make it all right. And all of that took me from the will of God. And it set me on a path where I backslid really bad and really hard to, to the point that I literally was going to sleep saying to myself, having the full assurance that if I did not wake up, I was going to end up in hell. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's a scripture verse that says, my brother, if your heart condemn you not, you know, like then you have confidence before God. And I got from such a high place to such a low place because I got the efforts, you know, and this is also why there's lots of scriptures, you know, we're not to forsake the assembling of the brethren. We're supposed to be united to have this accountability and things like that, of which I, ha I don't have, you know, um, yet God has sustained me through and through and preserved me and he restored me. Praise the Lord, <laughs> you know, yeah. but I've Praise seen how easy Hum, our human flesh, right? The the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Can be seduced to to fall, to say, to to be weary and well doing, to to just say whatever. I'm not doing this. I, I I'm tired. You know, um, yeah. especially if you're alone. Right. Um, and people are going to do it. People are going to do it in, in, the, in the last days when the mark of the beast and all this, and some people might hang on. They're like, no, I'm not taking it. I'm not taking it until persecution gets real, real. And if they didn't work out their, their character, their fears, their anxiety of death or whatever, uh, if they don't build certain characteristics like courage they don't exercise these disciplines, which are not natural. They're disciplines, right? Um, uh, a discipline is not a natural thing. They are acquired disciplines. Um, uh, they, they'll go and, and people will choose to fall. They'll be like, you know what? Forget it. My family's been without food for a month. I'm taking the mark and maybe my family will be saved or whatever, you know, and that's just, that's just so wrong. But the people will do that. They'll cave in their flesh. They will turn yeah. away. We're prone to that. We're prone to that. And, um, yeah. yeah. You ever seen any, um, any, uh, diagnostic, uh, spiritual diagnostic tools to, um, identify what the thing is that the Lord is trying to get at specifically in the deeper levels of purification and consecration. So we were talking earlier, we were talking earlier about how God has us go through a process. If we choose to go through the process to become more like him mm -hmm. and then he chooses at which time he would he will release a person or 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 lead them into provision and or you know or into ministry it's you know you were using the example of the illegitimate child and um and or and the apprentice the model of apprenticeship mm -hmm. and and how the 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 leader is pouring in and teaching the apprentice and then at some point, the leader um, hands off his work to the apprentice, and the apprentice becomes the, the new leader. Exactly. He's trusted to make the decisions. What, I'm, what I realize as I'm sitting here right now, this is exactly where the Lord has me. He has me in the middle of this new, of this new refining season. 
and I just asked that question so as to better understand what is the, I'm going to use your word, work yep. that, that I, that he wants me to do in this season mm -hmm. of rest that I may or may not be seeing yet. Mm -hmm. Um, so as to grow closer to him and become healthier. Okay. So, I mean, right here in chapter 12, verse 2, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. So Jesus, his life, and sacrifice is the author and perfecter of our faith. He's the example that we look to. So we well, compare, <sighs> we compare ourselves not to each other, but to Jesus. Where do we stand? So one of the things that like a question that I had to wrestle through, okay, is um, I used to wrestle with the fact that, right, because people would say, oh, you know, you're, you're a daughter, you have the inheritance, you know, you've been grafted, God loves you, for God so loved the world that he gave his son for you, right, and I looked at that, and it registered in my head at one point, as if God so loved his only son, that he um, you know, uh, basically asked of his son to, to be tortured and mutilated and crucified on a cross for me. What is this God gonna expect of me now that I'm in his family? <laughs> okay. I had to wrestle with that like for years because no good feeling was produced in me. If God crucified his son, Jesus, what is he going to do with me and my life now that it's his? Hold up, you know? Yeah. Um, now, that in itself, again, I wrestled with this question with God, right? Um and what it brought out of me in my questioning was a lot of like my insecurities, my expectations. We like, you know, uh, did God really mean anyone who wants to save his life must lose it? Uh, anyone, you know, like, hold on. Did God really mean what he says? You know, does the scriptures and... And, but at the same time that I'm asking these questions, I'm also experiencing God, you know? And so with the passage of time, um, we see God move, provide, teach, encourage, console, provide. We, we, we start building. It's just like a family. Like you can't expect a baby to like, you know, or a toddler to like, you know, just learn how to ride a bike, you know, like all on their own. Like there's certain things that he needs to be tall enough before his feet can reach the pedals, you know, like, <laughs> so yeah. there's certain things. That I, think, I, I think that, I think it might be important because um, as, as you started sharing that last bit, um, I was reminded of a conversation that we, we had a couple of months ago or maybe a month ago when I was still back up in Minnesota about um, the, the difference between sacrifice. Um, maybe we can define these terms and how, how they make sense together. Okay. Sacrifice. If, if we're called to be like Jesus, Jesus was the, the willing sacrificial lamb. Mm -hmm. The word self-sacrificial the word obligation and the word freedom. Yeah. The conversation we had was about obligation and freedom. Mm -hmm. 
an obligation you you were saying is rooted in a religious spirit yes however uh-huh. however self sacrificial love says this is where i'm this is where i am this is where i'm being called to serve mm-hmm. correct me if i'm wrong now i'm going to go somewhere freedom is feeling secure in and with and through the lord even though i might feel obligated to do said thing begs the question can one be can one feel obligation and freedom at the same time no so then it isn't about what you're doing it's about the mindset in which you're doing it your heart attitude not the mindset your heart attitude is it and when you're of heart- your own free will are you surrendering uh-huh. so check this out so jesus what look at what happened at the garden of gethsemane okay jesus was afraid and so he wrestled his anxieties in prayer god if if so there was an obligation check this out there was an obligation the sin of the world could not be paid for unless jesus chose to embrace the cross so there was an obligation but jesus was not obligated to do it he was asked to do it and so what jesus was doing at the garden is like if there be another way can this cup pass from me right because he didn't want to do it he knows what is required and obviously daddy said no there isn't another way but that doesn't mean that jesus was disowned of god or that jesus went but the plan and purpose for 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 the redemption of humanity rested on jesus free will to embrace the cross And what he did in that sweating and in that travail of blood tears of fear and dread and anxiety, knowing what needed to be done, is he got to a point of surrender. Not my will, Lord, but yours be done. And it is from a place of surrender that we can fulfill our obligations in a genuine way in our freedom but it's not so and so obligation is not that we are we we obey in freedom out of love for god and love for what he has called us to do not under the legalistic obligation you know um so I kind of does, does that kind of like separate the two? Um, yeah, it's an it's an attitude. It one hundred percent. Everything is about you know embracing the spirit of of the letter way more than the following it to the the law. So for example, so a, pra- so a, pra- so a practical step for today's teaching. How does one go from a heart position of obligation to a heart position of freedom in the same atmosphere? That, I mean, uh, that, that is a process. I mean, it's, sometimes it's a mind shift. Sometimes it's a wrestling in travail, crying. I don't want to know that, you know, and wrestling with God, like giving something up. I mean, and sometimes I did, especially like regarding my kids, like I had to give up my kids, you know, um, in my head, like, so God took them away from me, but I had to give them up in my head, in my heart. I had to be willing to speak the Lord and stop focusing on trying to get my kids back, you know? Um, but I, I had to, 
test what were my motivations. I wanted my kids back because I felt it was humiliating not to have my kids and being such a good and intelligent person that I am, I deserve to have my kids. I didn't like the fact that my family thought very poorly of me because I didn't have custody of my kids. But at the same time, every time I tried to get custody of my kids, I ended up losing my mind, you know, kind of like a King Nebuchadnezzar kind of situation where I felt that, yeah. God, you know, I was forsaken of God because God didn't want, he did not want to bless me with having custody and responsibility of my kids. His plans for me were to embrace healing and everything else that I would not have been able to attain at this age, you know, with the full-time responsibility of raising kids and the drama that they bring. But nonetheless, God blessed me with an amazing relationship with my son. So I have lost nothing by embracing the call on my life apart from the painful, you know, death of my ego and pride, <laughs> which is supposed to die anyways. So all glory goes to God, <laughs> you know, like, it's like, okay, yay. You know, your word is true. Um, and so, I mean, uh, that, that is kind of a self-determined process, I would say, you know, depending on the challenge, depending on the call, depending on your personality, that is a self-defined process. Mm -hmm. And I suppose, the, I suppose the saving grace is that the Lord, the Lord honors our decision. Yes, he does. He does. And he allows us to make mistakes just for the sole purpose of learning. Like, yeah. like the painful realities <laughs> of that said mistake. You know, he allowed right. me to get married to somebody I wasn't supposed to. He allowed me, you know, um, and then I was yoked to this person for, you know, five years, you know, before he passed away. So you know, God delivered me from that burden as well because he was an active addict and I had no, I couldn't function in ministry taking care of an active addict for a husband, you know, and all this in the Lord, you know? Right, right. Yeah. But I'm much more cautious and much more determined to stay single. <laughs> You know, like I have a new fervor for, for diligence, uh, yeah. you know, the first, the first, the first commandment, right? <laughs> Jesus, you know, and so sometimes that's what it takes. Like we're, oh, oh we're so, yeah. you know, it's like, yeah, um, that's good.